Hello and welcome to Pathways for Parents monthly video. Today we're going to be talking about STEAM and STEAM is an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. And I brought a special guest uh, with me today who's not known for STEAM but known for his talents in music, uh, John O'Neill. Hi, John. Hi, Miss Cindy. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. Okay. So little did I know that John O'Neill um, had loves science and so all of those things, science, math, technology, art. Art, music, everything. I love it all. Yep. And that when we were talking one day, he said, I can do science. So we kind of... Uh, collaborated and John is going to be doing a four-week STEAM program for three to five-year-olds, preschool age kids, at the Wilbraham Library um, in March. So looking forward to seeing that happen. And you'll be doing it with one of our fathers that has been in the program for a while, um, Eric and his son Axel. Yes, we're, we're very excited to be bringing science to these young minds. We're going to be having a great time learning all about science and how, how it affects us in our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. That is great, that is great. And how we put that little mind to work, to problem solve and to figure out. We were just talking about how you did a problem solving piece with your musical instruments. Yes, yeah, I'm often building and tinkering things um, for my musical performances and there is a lot of science involved with music. Mm -hmm. You were just telling me you were doing a one-man band. Yes, I was so. building a whole drum set for my for my feet to play while I play guitar and harmonica, and there, there there was some scientific method involved and a lot of trial and error as well. But physics plays a big part in music. Mm-hmm. Trial and error. Trial and error. So when the when the drum fell off the the thing that you built, yes. you knew that it wasn't going to work. That's it. It's not a repeatable result if everything's falling apart while you're playing it. That's so right. that's, that's, uh, that was a learning experience for me. So that'll be part of that STEAM program also that we'll be talking with kids about, that trial and error, um, you know, problem solving. How do we make things work? How do we repeat the process if it doesn't work? Right. What do we, what do we hypothesize will happen? What's our theory going to be after we do one experiment and then can we repeat the results and use the scientific method? Perfect. Um, in a way that's easy for the kids to understand. Perfect. But I love the fact that we use real language like hypothesis and theory uh, and trial and error. You know, rather than making up a kid language to say, oops, that didn't work. Now what do we do? Right, there'll be some kid language, but we're going yep. to definitely be, be using good terminology to get them prepared to move forward as they become more and more interested in science. Right, and I have booklets that each of the children will get that, that talks about you know, what it takes to be a scientist. And there's pages that they can draw in and write in and take notes on, even though many of them won't be taking notes. But they'll bring it home and they'll remember it enough to share with their parents. Yeah, and it's a great starting point for any kids who, who have shown a, an interest in science. Mm -hmm. That is great. I brought some little samples here today just to kind of give a flavor <laughs> to, to our experiments. Cookies and raisins. <laughs> everyone loves cookies and raisins, but not everyone understands that we can measure them scientifically. Ah. And there's a lot of different experiments we can do right from the kitchen and other parts of the home. So things that people have right in their, their everyday lives are, are perhaps more scientific than they, they give themselves credit I for. I think so too. If I put that cookie into a glass of milk, what happens to it? Right, it's probably going to get heavier because it's going to absorb some of the, the liquid mass that it's yep. surrounded by. My luck, the cookie falls into the bottom of the glass because it melted. <laughs> <laughs> and we can do experiments about that as well, Miss Cindy. Right? So I did bring a couple of little props just to start with. We have many homes have some sort of a measuring scale. This one's actually for food. And um, I brought these two little ping pongs, which I, I kind of like the way that they feel. They're very light, and I can blow them, and they'll go across the room, which is a science, you know, how far we could measure, how far that that little ball goes. 
Um, but we could put them into this thing and to see, did that move? Did the measure move? Did it move with John? It seems to move slightly. Those ping pong balls are pretty light. You might need more than one. So if I put two in, so it's now like just under one. I put two in. Where are we now? Oh, that's a measurable difference. It looks like we are just under two. So right in between one, one and a quarter and two. Hmm. Pretty light or is that heavy? I would say it's pretty light. Pretty light. Pretty light. Let me move this out. Now, I have a box of raisins. And if I take this box of raisins and put it into that measure, is it measuring more or less than those balls? Ooh, it's slightly heavier. That, that one small box of raisins is slightly heavier than both of those two ping pong balls oh. together. All right. So if I add two, will it be heavier or lighter? I'm going to go with heavier. Heavier? Is that with the raisins in there, or if I eat the raisins? Are you slightly hungry for a snack, Miss Cindy? <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm going to say each raisin has its own mass, so it's going, to, it's going to have a slight difference for every raisin that you pull out of that box. All right. So what does it measure here, like two and a half? We're looking at, mm, yeah, right around two and a half. Okay. Two and a half. All right, let's see, now. Okay, about half the box is empty now. So you got about a box and a half. Oh yeah, now we're right, just right at two. So we did go down about a half an ounce. Mm-hmm, and I could add these in one at a time, but I won't. Okay. I might just eat them. <laughs> well, enjoy, they does look that delicious. Mean, does that mean I'm gonna get heavier? <laughs> Slightly, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, how about our cookies? Are they heavier or oh, you'll lighter? You'll get heavier if you eat a lot of those. I guess so. Are you, now, to predict, let's yes. make a prediction. Yes. If I put in one cookie, would it be heavier or lighter than two boxes of raisins? Mm. I'm going to guess that one cookie is lighter than two boxes of raisins. All right, so your prediction is that one cookie is lighter than two boxes of raisins. And you didn't really I did feel not. them. Let's check, Let's see. Was your prediction right? Oh, well, yes, because we're right at two. And one and a half boxes was right at two, and two full boxes of raisins was at, we said, 2.5. Okay. So my wow. hypothesis seems to be correct so i might change it to a theory i might theorize that okay th those are good cookie, words well i might think that one cookie is lighter than two boxes of raisins now we'll have to repeat those results to use the scientific method there you go i i hired the right guy for the job <laughs> <laughs> now two cookies the same as the raisins or different no not the same uh, definitely different. So now two cookies is just a little bit heavier than two boxes of raisins. All right. So kids can try this at home. Sure. With various things. Sure. They can use a scale either from their kitchen, similar to what you have. Yep. They can also use, a lot of people have a scale in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So they can measure different things around the home. And they could stand on it, weigh themselves with whatever they're carrying. Sure. And, and do the math. Yes. Right? That's yes. interesting. That's fun. Um, the other thing that I love to do with kids is to measure the weight of fruits and vegetables. Oh, sure. That's a great one. In the water. Oh, so we're getting into buoyancy. We're getting into buoyancy. Yes. Okay. My huge pumpkin this big and do, what do you think it does in the water hmm well, well maybe we'll save that one for the program good one I'll have to come up with a hypothesis for the children yes my huge pumpkin does it sink or float hmm well, let me ask you this one. what happens to the water when I put my huge pumpkin into the water 
Well, so water takes up its own space. So if something comes into the water, it is going to move the water, what we call displacement. So the mass that is going to sink into the water is going to displace the, the water itself to make room for your pumpkin. So we should have a deep bucket so mm -hmm. that when the water gets displaced, Correct. It doesn't go over the bucket and Correct. onto the floor. Unless we're planning on making a big mess over outside. Yeah. Unless we're also thinking about how do mops work? Do they, <laughs> they, absorb, they absorb the water, right? Yes. I think we're going to go with the option of having a large enough I, container. I think we will do that, too, because yeah. I don't think the library will appreciate the water on the floor. Um, we have similar styles. We're both kind of playful with kids, yes, right? It's, yes. And have some humor and make sure that we're fun and that the kids have fun. Yes, this will definitely be focused on fun yep. while we're learning all about science. All about science, and I love that. I do love that. Um, our next little, our next little uh, idea here was um, the boat. Sure. So we, we're going to get into... A little bit of water displacement and buoyancy involved with sailboats as well. But another cool part of the physics of sailboats is how the wind... Turkey baster. Yes, the turkey baster <laughs> effect. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's also uh, how the, the aerodynamics are going to affect the sail of the sailboat. And we're going to talk about... Oh, there you go. Turkey baster for wind. Very nicely done. We're going to talk about the physics of how the sailboat move forward and what's really interesting about sailboats is the physics that that makes a sailboat able to sail into the wind hmm. which a lot of people don't realize mm -hmm. the physics involved with that uh, most people who don't know much about sailboats assume that you have to always go with the direction of the wind mm -hmm. and it's a uh, it's a good lesson yes and it's a technique called tacking mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's how you can go side to side against the wind instead of directly with the wind pushing you in the same direction as, as the, wind. the wind right so when you go downstream you there's a way of getting back upstream yes okay it's a good one that's good turkey baster is uh probably better for lighter things yes these are pretty light sailboats i wouldn't try to go to sea with your turkey baster. <laughs> thanks john <laughs> <laughs> But but the turkey baster can make yes. can make wind can make things move. Sure. Only if they're used properly. Sure. <laughs> you turkey baste. I'll hold the. Aha. Perfect. Yes. So the pinwheel has a lot of the same physics that cause a sailboat to move, cause the pinwheel to move. Mm-hmm. So would I be able to blow on my sailboat to get it to move? Probably uh, not. Well, this, not, these maybe tiny these. little ones, maybe, but I would think that you'd need an awful lot of wind to get a big sailboat. To I make. think you're right. I think you're right. The other thing that we could do with sailboats, right, goes along with a book, which I, we often like to connect a book to the science so that kids can see both the concrete and that fictional character piece, right? And this is a, a book called Who Sank the Boat? One of my favorites. And Who Sank the Boat is, is, is really pretty funny because I think the very first thing is that they, they get into the boat and um, it's just on the water at the end of the dock. And look at all these animals getting in there. We have the pig, the sheep, the... Um, is that a mule or a donkey? It uh, could be a mule and the bull. And wait, wait, there was one down here. The mouse. Oh, yes, the mouse. Right? The mouse. And this will be on the theory of weight, weight and measurements. And how many, how many of them can fit into a boat? So um, the story will be very, very cute and demonstrate who, who sank the boat. Do you have a prediction? Who well, do you think sank that, the boat? Let me see. That bull seems pretty heavy. That mm -hmm. pig seems like maybe it, it was the lamb. I don't know, Miss Cindy. We're going to have to do an experiment. We'll have to do that experiment. See who sank the boat. And read the book. 
Yes. So that's great because that's that's theory, but then you're you're putting your experiment to see if this actually works the way you think it worked, right? Correct. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and hypothesize, experiment, come up with our theory, see if we can repeat our our results. Very nice. Very very nice. All right. Now, inch by inch. One of my favorite songs. This I know. <laughs> I catch you singing all the time. <laughs> inch by inch, row by row, how does your garden grow? So that's a wonderful, gardens are a wonderful science piece by putting in this tiny little seed, watering and sun, and then they start to grow. So we'll, we'll look at that. But not only that, we can then measure them with a tape measure. Excellent. Right? We can measure all of these things. We measured with weights, but we can also measure how far our boat goes, how far, how far our ping pong balls go when they are blown. Measurement is, comes in all different we can measure with. Oh yeah, we can measure for length, we can measure for weight, we can measure for volume. There's a lot of different ways to measure things. Mm -hmm. A tape measure though is, is pretty specific in height and width rather than, rather than weight. I don't Correct. think I could do this with weight. Mm, no, I think, you're, I think you're probably going to want to use a scale for that. Right, very good, terrific. Um, <coughs> So these are some samples. Did you bring a sample, too, that you wanted to demonstrate? Well, so as many things in my life are so focused on music, I brought a couple of cool pieces nice. to share with you. And just a couple of cool instruments. They're actually the same type of instrument. But it's kind of cool. These are called boom whackers. And they, each one has its own pitch. And the pitch of these boom whackers is decided by the length of the tube. Mm. So the only real difference between these, other than the color, and that's just, that's just a color. Make it, it pretty. Yeah, it doesn't change the sound. The, the thing that does change it is the length of these tubes is going to give the short tube a much higher sound than the long tube. So mm. let's see if we can listen and see if we can catch that. So here's the big tube. And that is a do, is the name of the note. And then we're going way up to la. Hmm. And we can play them a couple of different ways. But. That. Well, thank you very much. It's really very scientific and very fun, and that kind of goes with our theme for our STEAM program. It is. Let me try that. Sure, please do. Um. You got it now. Nice yeah. Nice job, Miss Cindy. Very <laughs> nice. Boom, waka, waka, waka. <laughs> That's it. Very nice. Those are very fun. Thank very cool, you. and it's a great way to get kids to start thinking about science. Mm -hmm. Now, can I compare those to like wind chimes? You certainly can. In fact, they're very similar in many, many ways. These are almost a much larger, just plastic version of wind chimes and the, and the same, the same idea of length and the difference of length changing the, the tone. Mm. It's the same thing with wind chimes as it is with the boom whackers. That is great. Now, I was at the Cape recently and saw a whole lot of different kinds of wind chimes. There was wind chimes with seashells on them, wind chimes with plastic or glass pieces, wind chimes with um, the metal, the typical steel or metal chimes. Sure. Yeah. And they, so, yeah, the density of the material you're using is also a big factor. Hmm. So for these are the same materials, so the same density, really the only difference is length. But if you get into different materials that are different density, mm -hmm. that, that will also change the tone. Good to know. Yes. Next time I go into those shops, I'll know the difference. That is wonderful. And music is, is part of an art. It is absolutely a part of an art. So there's a lot of science, and many arts have science involved. Mm -hmm. I would think, yeah. So STEAM... S-T-E-A-M is the science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Perfect. 
So would you consider this part of the art process or the math process or engineering or all of them? This one is going to be a kind of a mixture of all of them mm -hmm. because you've got your science. We already talked about that. Technology is really the plastic is a, uh, a very technological material. It's mm -hmm. a man-made material that we take from a petroleum byproduct and they've engineered it into, whoop, oh, there's engineering again. Engineering, wow. They've engineered it so that it is a, uh, a material that will sound good. And also we have the art form is in the music side of these. What we hear, yes. Yeah. So there's a lot, we touched on a lot of those topics. I think we did, all in one. These boom whackers boom, are boom amazing. Whacker. They are amazing. <laughs> Very good, terrific. Well, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait either. This is going to be great. I'm so excited to do science with the kids. That is wonderful. I know. I, I, you know, you are an amazing, not only entertainer, but very bright, um, articulate, kid-friendly. Um, yeah, they know Mr. John, and they look forward to seeing you everywhere. And I look forward to seeing them. Mm-hmm. Very good. Are you still doing music? I'm doing music every day, Miss Cindy, so... Okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot of my friends on a weekly basis, some I see once a month, and good. some I see almost every day. Very good. So one of the dads that came to the Pathway for Parents programs way back when his little boy was just about six months old. Uh, You're talking about my friend Alex and his father Eric. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, they are coming, and um, Eric is going to be your assistant. Yes, Eric is a wonderful, wonderful man. He is excellent with children. He is. He's very enthusiastic about science. So he, we are going to have a great time teaching the kids. I think he, was a, he did something with science at the high school level. Yes, yeah. And Axel um, is following in his dad's footsteps. Oh, yes, apples and trees. We were talking about that earlier, <laughs> about how uh, kids, right? many kids tend to be like their parents. Like their parents. The apples don't fall far from the tree. Yes. So that's great. Yep. Great. Um, terrific. Anything else you'd like to tell the families about you or the program? or Just encouraging everyone to get involved. Let's get these kids working on scientific theory and getting in their hands on experiments and, and just that interest that's going to spark the next generation of scientists. Perfect. That is perfect. And watching the Olympics, we have a lot of science in there. Tons and tons of science, right, mixed in with all amazing. those sporting events. Just yep. amazing. Very good. Well, I'm Cindy Milner from Pathways for Parents, and thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.